And so the Dockers had an identity. But while the search for a name had been going on, so too had the search for the right person to take the helm of the new club. Kevin Sheedy was mentioned, as was Robert Shaw. But of course, Sheedy stayed with Essendon, and Robert Shaw went to the Adelaide Crows. All the while, the popular local choice had been Gerard Neesham, a man born and bred in East Fremantle, and one with a remarkably successful reputation after engineering four premierships in just seven seasons at Claremont. But what about that style they insist on calling chip and draw? Neesham. That's why they call him a general, you know. Played a tremendous year, been an ornament to the game. Neesham, girls of cucumber. It's the man who's marshalled this clam on side, not only this afternoon, but this season, Gerard Neesham. Do this so often, draw the man. Delaney's got it now. Neesham's style of footy. I don't think you can describe it that simplistically. You know, it's, a, it's a, quite a complex style and takes a long time to actually coach and train. And uh, I think all I'd like to say is that I hope it is a modern style of football and uh, it definitely blends in with the modern style of sport where, you know, you have to be able to attack and defend depending on which positions you play. So the chip and draw is a, quite a humorous thing for me because it's anything but that. OK, you're all family. You're going to have to get pretty close to get it. How do you reckon we got this many? <laughs> Oh, you can see Teddy. Teddy's the Teddy's from home and comes right away in the run of the post. A great win to Galilee, scoring by two lengths officially from right fingers. A close third duality. You used to get a lot of good advice from a lot of good people. And uh, and you couldn't wish for uh, for greater supporters. How good a bloke is Jared? Jared, Jared's a great guy. And, um, you know, we all love him and we're all behind him. And um, and doesn't matter what happens with the Dockers, uh, it will not affect Jared whatsoever. We used to all come together every Sunday for dinner or, or evening meal, every Sunday when I was uh, young. And we used to, you know, uh, play together. So when I was young, I was uh, mixing with, you know, Michael Regan, Con Regan, all the Regans. And so, yeah, and that, that type of thing. And we used to just like the success of the members of the family. So you're built, you know, you were brought up to firstly enjoy other people's success and also, I suppose, you had really good role models. It's a wobbly old kick. Will it get the distance? No, marked by Con Regan, right in the teeth of the goal. He plays on to Trizzy Lawrence. John Detheridge. And Con Regan coming through strongly. Could be holding the ball. Jared has yet to be proven in AFL ranks, but You've only, only got to look at his record in waffle uh, competition to, pr to prove that he is a good coach. But my understanding, and I've been in football now for well over 50 years, a person from England could come out and coach by the rule book. I mean, you don't have to be too bright to know the shortest distance between two, between two points is a straight line. But if you've got a brick wall in that straight line, there's a hell of a way to drive a car. There it is. Claremont have won the grand final. Nisha Moore smiles. His players have done it for him again. He's a master coach, a master tactician. He had the players at his disposal. Jared's worked out the way to do it. He's worked out, he's, he's bought a lot of sports, mainly water polo, rugby, football, soccer. He's brought everything into one thing and he's got the finer points. And it's an insult to Australian mentality that it took a, a kid like Jared to come along and show all these experts how to play football. The chip and draw description is too simple, isn't it? Too simple. They criticised Ishi Mandel in their, in their heydays, the 1946 undefeated side, the short passing game, because people that said, called it a short passing game didn't understand it. What it was is you kicked a man on his own. Now, whether that was 30 yards or 70 yards made no difference. You kicked to a man. Now, Jared put a, an emphasis on that, that he, he, he chips and draws, he, he, he helps the player with the ball, and he uses the ball. He doesn't just give it away. 
and it's a, it's a wonderful style of football and it'll take some stopping. The ball to the centre of the ground, Harry Neesham takes a good mark right in the centre of the ground, pulled around the neck and Empire Woods looks like awarding 15 yards here, yes, Harry Neesham to be awarded 15 yards. It's creating the advantage at the point of where the, the play is and creating to create that advantage. They say chip and draw, it's hand pass or small kick or whatever, but basically what they don't understand is that in doing that, and that's not, not really what it's about, but in doing it, you actually put a player totally out of the, out of the competition. He is no longer a threat and you are left with a, a, a man able to score. That's really what it's about. You've got to go flat out, mate. It's, it's the wrong colours. You get over there and you man a man on him. When we've gone man to man across the board, one person to one person, they've gone, oh, yeah, get the ball, mate. Bullshit. Tackle. You're on the ground, pal. Next one, you're on the ground. Where do you think they've gone? No. OK, explain the philosophy then. Well, the, the basic philosophy is too complex to explain. The basic philosophy is you have to be able to identify an advantage and take maximum use of that, and you have to be able to defend both as a forward and a defender and attack both as a forward and a defender. And so what, what I think Aussie rules is moving towards is becoming a complete sport. And most other sports have already moved there. Abraham, who's been very impressive since coming out of the ground, he's got plenty of speed away, he comes again, kicks inside the 50 on the lead bar. So what things do you look for in sports people? Your favours, what do you look for? What qualities are important? They have to be able to actually, uh, they have to be very competitive, prepared to learn. I think that's really important that a player is prepared to actually, well, has to be an intelligent sportsman. Um, I like them to be uh, quiet, as in, uh, in winning, and even quieter when they lose. So, you know, just, I suppose, a lot of the things that you saw Hawthorne, and not that we're actually copying them or would like to copy them, but there's a lot of things I, people admired in Hawthorne and I think the, a lot of their qualities are, uh, are probably very important for any team. Down to Browning, Swan's teaming better at the moment. He'll look for Nisham, who uh, does a very good blind turn. Over to Wright again, a long kick this time by Wright. But Browning, Nisham, calling for it, Paul Moore, but he goes longer than that. Finds Sylvia. Would you like to today with the bank manager? Yeah. Jude's a very determined fella, knew you know, what he wants in life and uh, I think that's been reflected with his success that he's had with Claremont and uh, where he's won you know, three or four premierships and uh, I think you know, he'll do very well um, you know, with the coach of the new Fremantle side. Did you ever imagine when you were coaching uh, Jared that he would one day follow in your footsteps and become a coach? Yeah, I think so because he, as I said before, he's a pretty deep thinker about the game and um, very involved in it. And, uh, you know, Jared was um, even then wanted to make a career out of football, and unfortunately, his playing career was cut short out of over here uh, through injury. But um, it doesn't surprise me that Jared's gone on to be a coach and uh, be a successful coach. If there is a downside to this job, is it this oh, media? The intrusion on the family? No, it's the, I think it's the fact that you actually uh, you lose your privacy, and that's and that's a real dilemma. You're I mean, very protective of your family, aren't you? Oh yeah, but well yeah, and they I mean they all like it. I mean they understand that that's it's a, a requirement of the job, and and I think it is. I mean it's a really important requirement that you have to actually front the media, whether it's uh, in good conditions or adverse conditions. It was terrific the other day coming into Darwin and uh, the boys at the cameras were there waiting for me and I walked past them and they didn't realise who I was. Because <laughs> well, the last time you were here you had hair. Yeah, that's right. <laughs> and a beard probably, but uh, more hair on the head. And it was really, uh, it was really hilarious because they actually came over later and, uh, oh, yeah, sorry mate, you know, they were all apologetic and I was just really happy. <laughs> Kick was in yourself. Don't run out of the plane. Oh, they didn't kick it to me. We've got to kick it to someone, and you're in. So, is there anybody you really want to stick it up oh, with this no. with this job? No, no, no. I haven't. Those things don't drive me. You know, 
No, not at all. I actually just really keen to get in there and uh, produce a team that's, that's exciting. It that actually plays with a bit of flair, that people are really happy to come along and watch and, uh, and, and can see the, the, the development of a young footballer and, uh, and, and the development of a young football team. I think, you know, it's, football is the most exciting sport in the world. I've seen most of them and, uh, and to play it in that manner to me is, is uh, really important.